Mr. Kyle Chandler is here on the show. Kyle, it's so nice to see you. I mean, I have never felt so jealous of someone's surroundings in all of these Zooms. That is quite the fireplace you've got roaring there. You know what? We need to hurry up this interview because it's really hot, too. <laughs> Now, you're zooming in from your home in Texas. Has, have you adjusted to this new virtual work life that so many of us are dealing with right now? Well, you know, I think like a lot of people, uh, there are positives and negatives um, within all this craziness. Yeah. One of the positive, the closest of family and new relationships within the family. I don't think we've ever been closer here in the house than, uh, than ever before. But the other part is, uh, as far as work is concerned, doing something like this, I enjoy doing it like this. I this takes away a lot of uh, a lot of stress, travel, tension, the whole the whole deal. And I feel comfortable. You sit here in your in your under uh, in your pants and <laughs> everything. Good. Yeah. Well, now now we know that below that screen you're just in your underpants, and and I understand why because that is a warm fire. I get it. <laughs> now. Carl, this is your first time on the show, and, and I, I should say right now, I'm such a huge fan of so many performances that, you, that you've given in your career. I really am, but I didn't know this, that, that when you became an actor, um, a Waffle House played a significant role in your choice to act. Um, exp how, how does this... Explain to me how this happens. What's the significance? At the University of Georgia. Um, a girlfriend and I were walking down the street around three o'clock in the morning. We decided to go to the Waffle House, which was around the corner from where we were renting our, our apartments and stuff, and, and to get a cup of coffee. And I ran into four people who were very strange, very bizarre people, three, three guys and a girl. And we bummed a cigarette. We had the longest conversation. And as I was leaving, the one fellow uh, who became a very dear friend, Tyree, he goes, hey, you should try out for a play down in the Cellar Theater. I have no idea why they ended up, they were with the drama department. I auditioned for a comedy of errors. I was one of the Dromeos. I got the role, ended up going to the graveyard and doing all the, doing all the study audition, got it. And uh, it changed my life. One, I, once I've met all those people, they were all absolute freaks. I mean, <laughs> nut. And I knew I'd found my home. I was in. And uh, the other thing was when we did that, that show in the cellar theater and and it ended, and we stood there, and I heard, <laughs> I was in. That, that, was, that was when I went home to tell my mother, here's what I've decided I'm going to try to do. And that was the beginning of it. Well, God bless Tyree for seeing that talent in you. I mean, otherwise, we would never have had uh, some of the incredible shows and movies that you made. I mean, I mean Friday Night Lights is, is such an uh, iconic show. And, and I didn't know this, but... Some of your real life actually made it onto the screen in, in that show. In what way did your real life bleed into the scripts for that? It was funny because Friday Night Lights, we would, Connie and I, and hello to Connie, she is one of the greatest people I know. Yeah. I, I love her dearly. And she and I would have opportunities to improv during the show. And so it was just, it was just natural that you know, you get uh, 25 years I've been married to this point, and uh, during the marriage, you know, you get into these arguments, and I don't win many of them, but I could bring the argument to the show, present the argument, put my facts out there, win the argument, done. And so when the show would air and my wife would see these things, she'd be like, you, well, she'd call me something. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was great fun, as well as the kids. You know, every once in a while I'd try to give one of the, one of my daughter's advice, and they'd stop me halfway through. It's like, Dad, I heard that one. Episode 7, season 2. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you talk about your, your daughters. Though. I, this is really exciting. One of your daughters, Sydney, I believe, has been cast in the new Olivia Wilde movie, Don't Worry, Darling. Uh, how do you feel about her following in your footsteps? Do you have any worry or anxiety about her acting? Well, I never push the kids towards that at all. If anything, I... I suggested they be doctors or lawyers. I just, I, I didn't, I never pushed them in that area. But I was over in Rome when I was doing Catch-22, and she was visiting, and she told me uh, she graduated with a writing degree, and she's a very good writer, very well-read, very, she's a sharp kid. And uh, she said, Pop, I want to take some acting classes. And I was like, oh, really? And she goes, but it's only, it's only to, 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 to learn how to develop characters for right. my stories. I think 
a benefit to me to, to be able to develop these characters and such. And I said, well, that's a great idea. And that's what she did. Um, and then it, she pursued it further and further. And we spent the whole last 10 months uh, going in and out of the uh, guest house and she had all these uh, auditions that we'd put on tape. So there's a complete different language we have together and a different relationship that I find beautiful. But um, she just told me the other day, I was telling her this and she goes, oh yeah, I lied to you. It's like, what do you mean you lied to me? She goes, I was already in acting class when I asked you if that was all right. <laughs> That's great. I mean, what, a, what an incredible thing to be part of. We have to congratulate you on, on your brilliant new movie, The Midnight Sky. For anyone who doesn't know, tell them what it's about and who you play. Midnight Sky is about a scientist on Earth, in the Arctic, a lone sole scientist, George Clooney. And he is racing to try to stop a spacecraft from returning to Earth after a multi-year journey because there is a global catastrophe. There it is. Now, this is your third time working with George Clooney. Do you find, do you have a, a shorthand in the way that you communicate? What's he, what's he like on the set as a director? In, in all seriousness, yes, because he's an actor as well. So you're already skipping the middleman when it comes to, you know, discussing, discussing things. And uh, he also, he, he, probably like your set right there, you, you want to make it fun. You want to make, ha everyone has a good time, but everyone knows what they're doing. They're doing their job 110%. Yeah. And that's the way that's are. It's a perfect atmosphere. I think, if I'm honest, I think we're, about, we're at about 68% here, but that's, <laughs> that's actually good for a Monday. So, yeah, I'll take that. I don't think I've ever seen 110. Oh, better watch your back, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but what was he, what's he like when he's giving you notes? Because like you say, he's an actor, you're an actor. That, that must be great to have a director who knows exactly how you're feeling. You no, know, he gives, he's, he's like one of the great directors, you know? He, he comes up with, he's the kind of director that says less and it means more. And although a lot of the times I get the same direction from most actors and directors, and the one thing that he says, you know, is like, he'd come up and from his heart, he would say it, from his mind, he would mean it. And he'd say, act better. <laughs> and I would. <laughs> You absolutely would. Now, Carl, we've been doing a thing on the show called A Late Late Show and Tell, where we ask our guests to, that, to share something with us from home that we may otherwise never get to see. Do you have something you'd like to share with us tonight? I do, James. I have something I have to share tonight. This is something that has been in my house for 28 years. I think, honey, 28? This is something that my wife and I, when we first met, we were sharing a bottle of my girlfriend, we were sharing a bottle of champagne and we had grapes and cheese and crackers. And for some reason we took a grape and we rolled it in the wax of the candle. And we said, we will keep this grape until, well, until we're, we're not together anymore. So I still have it. So if you want a long relationship <laughs> you take a grape and roll it in wax, and then you join hands in matrimony. But if you don't want to be together with someone for 25 years, do not roll a grape in wax before you get... Don't do it, for God's sake. See, I've That's never watched a conspiracy theory video, but I feel like this is what they feel like. <laughs> this sort of level of passion. Well, thank you so much for sharing your wax-covered grape and... Congratulations on such a long, healthy marriage. Reggie, do you have a question for our guest this evening? Yes. Tonight's question goes to... Uh, let's, let's make it for uh, Mr. Chandler. Okay. Uh, okay, so yes. you've, you've played many roles, right? <laughs> so, like, what's, like, a role that you're like, whoa, I can't believe I played that. Um, I played a, uh, I played a cashew one time. <laughs> and, uh, have you ever seen uh, a cashew shell? Uh, actually, I haven't. No. It's a fruit-like thing, right? <laughs> I mean, that's the answer. It's a cashew, Reg. Is, is that correct? You know, it's so strange, but that actually is what I had written down 
uh, as incredible. an answer. So that's correct. Ladies and gentlemen, please thank the one, the only Kyle Chandler.